There is also a form of training which can help people with macular disease make better use of their remaining peripheral vision. It's called eccentric viewing because it doesn't rely on the central vision. The Macular Society's volunteers run training sessions and so do some other organizations. The training helps people to identify the part of their retina which is working best and then helps them to change the way they look and read to bring that part of the retina into the center of their vision. Can you really yeah. focus where those two lines cross? Where I'm showing, putting my pointer? And tell me, with your point with your finger, where you think the clearest part of that grid is by actually concentrating on the middle, on that, which part yeah. of that grid is clearest the to light, you? The light, the light. This area around yeah. here? Yeah. Okay. Light is essential. Your, the best light is just below your eyes so it doesn't blind you. You just hold them up here like that and you put the page along with your eye up and you can read what's there. It's absolutely wonderful. It doesn't work for everyone, but it's very valuable to those who can master the technique. This makes your life independent. You don't have to wait in your family coming up till you read everything for you. You can read your own letters, you can read instructions, you can read guarantees. If you want to have an argument about your electricity bill or something like that, you've got the reference and you can go to town on them. It makes you independent. You're leading a normal life. I didn't mind giving up the car, I didn't mind not being able to play golf. I didn't mind that so much. What I did mind was not being able to, to read. Now, there are audio books, there are cassettes, uh, there are various scanners, but it's not the same as simply picking up a book. Now, I'll never be able to read the same way as a sighted person can read. I, I'll never be able to simply just browse and scan, but I still can pick up a book and read it myself. I can read my own mail, I can read the own letters, and that's very, very empowering. You can find out more about low vision help, eccentric viewing, and a great deal else from the Macular Society helpline. The helpline is often the first port of call for people newly diagnosed with MD. People assume all sorts of, or fear all sorts of things. They, they don't know what's going to happen to them. Um, they think their life could be coming to an end, almost. It's, it's everything's going to be different. And very often it's a, a stage later in life when they're dealing with lots of other things as well. So what we want to do is to, first of all, listen to them and find out what it is, what their concerns are, and then talk through with them um, and, and address those particular areas, and also maybe um, give them information, the that questions that they've not thought call. about yet. The Society also has a free telephone counselling service for anyone with macular degeneration. You can find out more by calling the helpline. Both the helpline and counselling services frequently hear from people with an unexpected and sometimes alarming side effect of sight loss, visual hallucinations. It's a phenomenon called Charles Bonnet syndrome, after the 17th century natural scientist who first described it. The most important thing to remember about it is that it is not a disorder of the mind, but a normal response of the brain to loss of vision. We know that when we lose vision, the nerve impulses from the, 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 the camera part of our eye, from the retina, uh, decrease to the brain. And the brain cells then fire off when they shouldn't do and uh, it's that spontaneous firing off of cells in the brain that causes the hallucinations. There were people going across a, a crossing outside the local hospital and all of a sudden it looked as, to me as though there were cars coming and crossing the, the crossing there as well, knocking people flying. Um, I nearly screamed, but suddenly realised that nobody else was taking any, any notice of it and they were just carrying on talking or walking or whatever as though there was nothing happening and then I looked away and looked back again and it had all gone. It's not a sign of 
uh, mental illness or, or uh, dementia or any other sort of mental problem. It's, it's something that all of us can do if we lose our sight. I really did think, what on earth's the matter with me? I, thought, I, I just didn't, at that time, connect it up with the eyesight problem. And I did get a bit frightened, but I didn't mention it to anybody because I thought they'd think I was daft, silly, stupid, whatever. A typical hallucination will be relatively straightforward. It'll be of a pattern, a tapestry perhaps, or brickwork or lattice work. And most patients that have Charles Bonnet syndrome will describe an experience of that sort. About half of them go on to have more complex experiences. I'm an artist <laughs> and I was up in my studio and I suddenly noticed things interfering with my vision. Um, the initial ones were slightly abstract, slightly latticey, but rum, uh, jumbled up, not, not a regular lattice pattern image. And um, I was a little bit concerned and uh, being an artist, I thought, well, I'll do some pictures of them. Um, which I did, and as I say, this, this is, is the first one I did. I did have other images of um, what I call gargoyle heads, which is um, this one here, and uh, various sort of heads like that, and in black and white, strangely. Charles Bonnet syndrome hallucinations tend to occur in a state of drowsy wakefulness, so when you're sitting in a chair, um, not not falling asleep, but sort of relaxing. And so if you arouse yourself by walking around, making a cup of tea or something, that sometimes breaks the hallucinations. Uh, putting the lights on if they're off, or, or switching them off if they're on, changing some form of well, ambient lighting condition there. sometimes helps as well. Yeah. And sometimes people describe simply opening or closing their eyes, uh, in effect changing the light conditions, can also stop them. It is important that, that uh, people do, if they have anything like this at all, I would say that the best source to go to initially is the Macular Society. That is their area. They have their specialists, etc., who can um, advise them as to what information to give people, and they are very helpful.